Welcome to the custom Stormtrooper editing PC build brought to you by Slickwraps. Big thanks to them. They sent out this custom uh, NZXC Phantom with a Stormtrooper skin on the front. Link down below if you want to go check Slickwraps out. Uh, they don't actually offer PC case skins yet. Hopefully they do in the future. They offer skins for plenty of other devices. Uh, so basically we're going to take these parts and the parts inside of this computer and transfer it over into the Stormtrooper computer. Okay, so before I get into the parts I chose, I do want to say that these are some of the channels you should be watching on YouTube for PC hardware suggestions and reviews and how to get the most for your money. Uh, I am by no means a master in that area. I used to be a lot better read on it than I am now. These parts were mainly chosen on what would definitely work, what was available to me, whether I already had it or if a company was willing to send it out, and of course, what would look good with the Stormtrooper theme. So I'm going to say what I got, but I'm not really going to go into why each part I chose. Each part I chose, Yoda. Uh, so big thanks to Corsair for sending some products out. This is the Corsair RM650. It's in here right now. That's going to be the power supply. Corsair H100i GTX. In here right now, that's going to be the cooler. We have 16 gigs of... Ooh, 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance, uh, the low profile, so LPX um, DDR4 RAM. That'll be the RAM. We have the MSI X99A Crate Edition motherboard, and I mainly chose this for the color scheme because it's black and white, so that will look quite good. For the CPU, we have the i7-6800K, which is basically a balance between really, really powerful and future-proofed versus cheap and easy to upgrade with. Uh, so it's not too expensive, but it does have enough performance to get the job done whenever I need to edit on this PC. Because keep in mind, most of the editing is done by Byron on his MacBook and Final Cut, but we do need an editing PC uh, hooked up and ready to go with Premiere that can handle 4K renders. So that's kind of the rationale behind all this. And on that note, actually, the GPU is the GTX 960, which is more than enough for, you know, CUDA acceleration and rendering. We don't do much PC gaming, so it's not really gonna be a problem. That will carry over just fine. And then lastly, there are two LED strips from Cable Mod. They're magnetic, they're white LEDs, and they will just spice up the looks of it. All right, so even though we do have to transplant a lot of stuff, the first step is actually still to put the CPU on the motherboard. And the only way to open the CPU is obviously using long claw, just very carefully. Boom, consider that seal broken. All right, so with the Intel CPUs, obviously the pins are on the socket itself and you just match up the little triangle in the corner that matches up to the triangle over there. And when you set it in, you just wanna drop it in like that. Give it a little wiggle, make sure it's in there. I don't remember which one I did first. And like so, then that pops right off. CPU installed. You know, the RAM package needs cutting. You just very carefully get your long claw and cut it open. Most useful purchase I've ever made. You know, RAM is pretty simple. Uh, you just put it into the slots. Actually, I should read the manual to find out which channels I should put it in. All right, so this is actually one of the few scenarios in tech that I still use a manual, but it's very important because each motherboard does it differently. You can see with this one, it's pretty weird with dual channel because I only have two sticks. It goes in the furthest slots possible away from each other, which is just kind of counterintuitive. You would think you'd put them next to each other. You know, I don't really know. And uh, I'm not even sure how much the performance uh, difference would be. That's the wrong way around. The performance difference would be if I didn't go with the exact recommendation that's in the manual, but I'm not really worried about it. There's only a clip on one side on these. Just drop her in and we're good. And then as it said, the other one will be in the one all the way down here and that's the opposite. All right, RAM installed. All right, so we put the radiator in and the fans just temporarily to test everything. So we're gonna put the motherboard in now and that will confirm that everything fits. So you got a foam IO shield over there and boom, right like that, everything will fit. So now we're just gonna screw that in. All right, so it's come time to install the H100i GTX. First off, that means cleaning the gunk off that, which is gonna be very satisfying, check that out. Oh, look how shiny, not quite done. All right, so a lot of people use different methods of applying this, and Linus Tech Tips actually did an interesting video on it, and it showed that it really doesn't matter, as long as you have enough there. So I'll go for the P-dot. It's a little bit like a P-dot. And that will work just fine. So I'm gonna take this, 
you're gonna have to scoot over a little bit. Gonna go ahead and place it on. Hold it firmly in place and get the screws so they go in like that. You wanna do one corner at a time to distribute the force. And then once you have two corners in, you can stop holding it down, but you wanna keep it held down so this the thermal paste spreads evenly. And then you do have a little bit of control with the tubing, it is pretty stiff. So not too much control. And then you wanna go at these still alternating corners with a screwdriver to really make sure they're in as tight as possible. All right, quick progress update. We've installed a Noctua intake fan. This will be covered so you won't even notice the brown color. Uh, we moved one of the NZXT fans down here because that will look good with the color. The magnetic LED strips are down here and magnetic LED strips are officially the coolest accessory in the world for your computer. It just makes it so easy and it's a full frame LED strip now because both of them just connected together. Uh, so now it's about time to install the 960. And as I said earlier, this is not used for gaming, really. So the 960 has plenty of CUDA and uh, like video editing acceleration involved. So I don't really need to upgrade to like a 1070 or 1080. If I was a gamer, I would 100% upgrade. 1070 offers a fantastic value, maybe even like the RX 480. That's what just came out, right? Um, but because I'm not doing much gaming at all, it, it would really be an unnecessary upgrade. All right, now that I have the right great saw, you can just line it up like that. Boom, and she's in. I'm gonna go ahead and screw these back on, and I'll catch up in a bit. All right, so it's all built, put together. It's the moment of truth, uh, whether or not it will turn on. Got it plugged into the monitor, plugged into the wall, and a little light on the motherboard went on. All right, we're back. It's actually the next day now. Uh, last night we could not get it to post and we tried for like a really long time. So we figured, you know, sleep on it. We woke up, completely took it apart and then put it all back together from the ground up. And hopefully, hopefully, hopefully it works. Uh, between that time period, the RAM that Corsair sent out is here. They actually sent 32 gigs of um, 3200 megahertz DDR4 white LED RAM, which is absolutely incredible. Thanks, Corsair. And uh, it's in there right now, so if it posts correctly, we should um, see the LEDs light up. Alright. Motherboard looks good. OC Genie is lit up. I don't know if that's good or bad. I guess I'll use this power button up here. Oh, ho, ho. yep, you can see the RAM lit up as well. These are really bright. I like that look. Let's see if it posts. I don't know if the monitor's on or not. All right, so we're booted in. I uh, booted right into Windows because the two SSDs I'm using are just carried over from the old build. There's nothing new storage wise there. So I was able to find the right boot drive, and there we go. She's running. There is no mouse. So hold on. All right, so we're checking out. Uh, we've got the i7 6800K recognized, 32 gigs of RAM, and the GPU is working because the video is out of the GPU. Everything is looking good. Let me just make sure both drives are in there. We got both drives. We are all good to go. The PC is working. A little adversity on the way, but you kind of have to expect that every once in a while. We were able to overcome it, and it looks amazing. All right, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Big thanks to Slickrafts for sponsoring this video. Custom Stormtrooper editing PC is built. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to see more content. And as always, 